performance with a great testimony, all honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know whether everybody came here to see, but I'll tell you one thing, that God is in this place. Amen. And if anybody here is not a believer, I dare you to try to shut your heart to the things that God wants to do in your life. I need to start this off with scripture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse, chapter 2, verse, chapter 1, verse 5. Paul writes these words, and I say these words to everybody here. This is, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I shouldn't be here, and you shouldn't be here today. I don't know if you understand. Who here knows the stuff that I used to do with my music here? Man. I know you're not clapping for it, right? No. <laughs> so if you've heard my music, is it a miracle what God can do? Man. The same one that he used to destroy you and your children and your children's children because of this filthy mouth that I have. God has taken it and turned it around. I should not be here because I should be rotting in a jail cell somewhere when the enemy wanted to destroy me. When the enemy, he used me. He wanted to use me to not only destroy this city, but every city in Northern California. But God said, I got something different. And I give God all the honor and all the glory. I want to first of all thank the church that helped let this happen. I want to thank the theater for letting this and allowing this to happen. Man. I want to thank Brother Miguel and his wife for helping along with this happening. I want to thank my brothers that came. Brother Frankie, Nate, Brother Tony, Sylvia, Man. and everybody else that's involved in this day. I got a brother here today about these, but he's here also. And he's a pastor. And he came out of the north of Familia. And God has used him. And he passed that church for many years. First of all, let me say this. Is that those of you that don't know, I grew up in a Christian home, a Pentecostal home. I grew up in a home that, that I, 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 I heard my mother and my father always praying. I used to hear them speaking in tongues and service. I used to sing my uncle when he would play the guitar and be jumping as he played the guitar crazy. I remember him singing and he couldn't finish the songs because the song started in Spanish, but it ended in a different language. because of the things that Satan has because he wants to destroy our children. Let me throw that in as a footnote. Never stop praying for your children. Yeah, yeah maybe they'll make a mistake. Don't stop praying for them. That's what the enemy wants, to make you think, oh, you know what? All right, I'm going to let them live their life and they'll learn on their own. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. But I grew up. I grew up in a household where I should have known better. But the enemy is such a liar. And at that time when I was growing up, that was at the time when I had two older brothers. And they were all choked down with the penalties and the dickies and the bandages. And, and I used to see that as a little kid. And I used to think, man, I want to be like that. And I used to see them kicking with their homies. And, and just the whole brim has the whole vida, the whole lifestyle that that came with. And that's what I thought I wanted. I live in Tracy, and right next to Tracy is a Tracy prison. And, and the Nuestra Familia had a real stronghold in that prison. 
And because that prison was in Tracy, we would get the Tracy Press as a newspaper. And I remember reading all the stuff that would happen and all the things that they were doing to the, to the, to the enemy inside of prison. And I used to use, I used to cut them out because I glorified this, this game. Because I thought, man, to be NF was like the best thing that could be like to be a, like to be in the presidency or something. Or to be a part of something that was big. Yeah, that's right. And somebody said that there was a liar. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I grew up with that. And when I became about 15, 16, 17, I started gangbanging. And I started doing what I was doing. Because at that time, I had a, ch a child coming when I was 17. You know, everybody knows. That's the lifestyle of the neighborhoods. Man. Alone, Jesus. And there was a point in my life where I, was, uh, I started writing lyrics. I started writing raps. And I was about 16, 17 years old. And I remember my aunt calling me. My aunt was a prayer warrior. She's the one that would get in the closet for two days, in her bedroom for two days and fasting, and start to just prophesy over the things, and start to call everybody and say, the Lord just told me this. The Lord just told me that. And she called me one day. <laughs> called me one day. And this was right before I really, really started to rise in my career, in my music. And she called me and she said, you know, she was crying actually. And I didn't know what happened, but through her crying, I finally understood what she was saying. She was saying, she, uh, uh, David, she goes, you need to stop with doing what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to stop what you're doing because God showed me that that Satan took you and took you up this hill and put you on a pedestal. And when you thought you had it all, and when you thought you were there, he was going to drop you off and he was going to destroy you and kill you. Now, I couldn't, I couldn't laugh about it. I couldn't brush it off. Because even though I didn't serve God, I knew that it was true the God of my mother and my father. Amen. So me and my stubbornness, in my stubbornness, I wanted the rap career so bad. I wanted the fame so bad. I wanted the power that came with the rap industry, the music industry. I wanted all those things that Satan has to offer. I thought that's what I wanted. And I ignored the things that my aunt said. And it's like if Jesus was saying, David, I know what's ahead. Come on. I know what's ahead, David. Come on. And it's as if I said, that's what I want. And I chase after it, not realizing what was going to happen. See, this is not a story of just myself, of Sir Dino. Because there's many on this earth that are no longer here on this earth because of Sir Dino. There are many here that didn't have the chance that I had. So how can I boast? Yeah, Sir Dino. And I began to, to, to do rap concerts and to do rap music and, and started to do concerts. And next thing you know, I got nationwide. And I, I signed to a record label. And I started doing movies. And I started flying here and flying there and filling places up like this in other cities and other states. But with a different spirit than the spirit here. Amen. And I became wrapped up in that lifestyle. There's somebody here that needs to hear that. And I know, I praise God, I thank all my brothers and sisters for supporting this day and for coming through. But I know there's somebody here that has to see Christ. And somebody needs to hear it. There's somebody here. Are you I thought the whole being alone and the crazy lifestyle, I wanted to be the craziest one. I wanted to be the craziest one in my city. And I used to go around the city, all the, everybody that knows me of Tracy knows I used to always be strapped. And they know, everybody knows, and it's funny because my fiance, I tell her sometimes, I tell her these stories, and she's like, no, David, you're, you're like a teddy bear. 
Man, I'm tired of drinking. Man, I'm tired of drinking. Man, I'm tired of this stuff. Man, I'm tired, right? Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. You reach that point and realize you can't change yourself. Yeah. And you go into maybe a rehab or a counselor or somebody and you realize you can't tell me nothing either. Man. And you reach that point. And then you open up the scriptures. And Jesus says, Come to me, those who are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I reached that point. December 2nd, 2003. I reached that point. I called my brother. I said, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to rap anymore. I don't want to do none of this stuff anymore. I can't do movies anymore. I don't want to do concerts anymore. I don't want to be Sir Dino anymore. And he says, stop doing it. And I tried. I tried, but you know what? I didn't realize how trapped I was. Because I couldn't go anywhere. Because, oh, there's Dino. I see homies. Hey, what's up, Dino? I see enemies. Hey, there's Dino. I couldn't get away from it. And that's when I realized how. Am I going to get out of this? There's probably somebody sitting here because this is a small town and maybe you've been gangbanging for a long time or maybe you've been doing drugs with your friends and those are the only friends you have for a long time and you think, how can I get out of it? How can I get away from it? And I thank God that you came here because you're going to get the answer today. But you know what? God didn't get me out of jail. 
Thank you. And I said, all right, now I'm saved. God, open the door like you did for Peter. And the door didn't open. And the next day, God, open the door like you did for Peter. And it didn't open. But you know what? That 20 years got knocked down. I ended up doing I ended up getting sentenced to eight years. And out of those eight years, I ended up doing five and a half years. I got out January 22nd, 2010. 
and the things that were taken from me have been restored. Amen. And the things that were no longer there, God has given me something better. Amen. God has blessed me. He is just so good. I can stay here for a long time. I know I'm probably going over my time. Oh, but I just want to let you know, if you haven't accepted Jesus, and you came here to hear Sir Dino, and if you've listened to my music and followed that music, then don't stop following. Don't stop listening. Continue to listen to what I'm saying now. Continue yes, to listen. Continue to listen. Continue to listen. Woo. I got an email. I got an email from somebody who's a little, little homie, I guess, and he says, hey, what's up, Sir Dino? Man, what's up, man? You left us behind. And I'm like, no, brother, keep on walking. I want to thank you for allowing me to share today. Amen. And praise God. Thank you. Continue to serve Him. Hallelujah. Continue to worship Him. Jesus. Continue to live.